Welcome. Today I have the Remington Model 11 Sportsman. It's a 12 gauge shotgun. I believe this barrel has been cut down because um, it says modified on here, but there's no way there'd be a modified 18 and a half inch barrel. It's in really good condition. I just picked it up at an auction. So uh, let's see if it shoots and then we'll talk about it a little more. Okay, so she's all loaded up. Let's see if it suits. Not bad. Shoots pretty good. And those were light uh, 12 gauge loads. Let's try some slugs. Yeah, that kicked a little bit. Let's try this paper one. Here's another old paper. Let's try this one. Not bad. The old papers kick, but they 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 cycle good. Let's try some old Winchester one ounce Super X slugs. All right, so it only holds two rounds in the tube and one in the chamber, so we'll see how this one works. And one more. Shoots a little high, but that's to be expected. It is a cut down. Let's try some buckshot. Double out buck, nine pellets. Oh, what the frick that hurt. Yowie, yeah. Ooh, that hurt. So, the short barrel puts a lot of recoil on it. But it still shoots good. This is a nice little shooter. With light bird shot, maybe a good grouse gun. It was uh, a good pickup at the auction. Maybe I could find a replacement barrel for it sometime down the line. Why they cut it down to 18 and a half inches, I don't know. Probably would originally had a 28 inch or 30 inch modified barrel on it. But it's still in good shape, functions good. It's based off the Browning patent. You'll see the Browning Auto 5 later on. Um, some of the uh, Sweet 16, Light 12s. I'll have this same type of a humpback design. It's got a nice little flying duck uh, engraving on the side. It's more of a, you roll engrave, a quick engraving. It's not anything fancy. Same thing on this side has a pheasant. So these would be awesome shotguns in their day. They would have been uh, nice hunting guns. Why someone cut this down to 18 and a half inches? I have no idea, but it's a lot of fun to shoot. Let's shoot it a few more times. Going back to bird shot. We're going to shoot at the uh, falling plate rack, see what happens here. Not bad. Let's try one for a pattern on the steel silhouette. Definitely shoots a little high. I have to really get down on it, which would be good for a flushing bird. So this might be my grouse gun, some light load 12 gauge and uh, flying grouse on a flush. It might be good, it's throwing a heck of a pattern. I'm about 18 yards away and it's pretty much covering the whole silhouette. Let's try one on that circle down there. Not bad. I kind of like it. It definitely with the bird shot is much better. So let's take a look at this. Look a little closer. So here we have it. Stock and wood is made out of walnut. The blued finish on the receiver is still in excellent condition. 
The barrel has been cut down to 18 and a half inches. On the, on the top of the barrel it says, Remington Arms Company, Illion, New York, made in the USA, Browning's U.S. Patents, 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch or shorter shells. And you can see that. I don't know if you can see that on there. And there's that little scene of the uh, flying duck scene on there. And on this side, you can see the fl flushing pheasant scene. So not bad. I like it. I wish it had more capacity, but three rounds should be enough. I have to do the research on it. There might be a there might be a waterfowl plug in here. So as far as I know, and that might be the reason why it's. Uh, only holding three shots. So it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna get a couple shots off and then uh, we'll uh, turn the camera off and get back when it stops raining. Definitely shooting high, but I like the way it shoots. So far it's functioning good. Runs like a top. Very good. Okay, the rain has stopped, the shotgun is loaded, and what I have in front of me is a spinning target. So it's designed to be struck either the top or the bottom and keep shooting it until it does one complete revolution around. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have enough shots. I only have three with the shotgun and it throws such a wide pattern. It might not hit it as hard and I am using really light loads. But let's see how I can do on it. Oh, I just barely made it over. I wish I had another fourth shot in there. That'd make a difference, but luckily I got it. But if I was any farther back, I don't think I'd have enough energy with this wide open pattern and this light load to make that target react like that. Let's try something else. Three rounds in the shotgun. Down range, I have a pepper popper. When I shoot the pepper popper with the first shot, it's gonna engage two launching clay birds and I'm gonna engage the two clay birds. I only have three shots, there's three targets. Let's see how this works out. Are we ready? Let's go. Got them both. That worked out well. Let's try that again. One more time, shotgun's loaded. Popper, two birds launched. Let's see how this goes. Got them both again. Uh, that that's this this shoots just great. I mean, if you point shoot it and don't worry about that bead, it works out all right. But normally, the bead would have been on a higher platform on the 28-inch barrel that originally came with this gun. It would have probably had a higher platform, and that bead would have been screwed into the top of it. When when normally when a barrel is cut down, they just drill and thread a hole and and put a standard bead in it, which is what was done here. That lowers the bead so significantly that it also raises the impact point significantly. So firing a slug out of it at this point, trying to use that bead as a front sight, not gonna work out. So I've ordered a couple different heights, beads, they're on their way, they'll be in tomorrow, I'll put them on, and then we'll test fire it, make sure it's zeroed. So one of those heights will work just fine, and it'll bring the gun right to the point of aim, and it'll be all right. As far as point shooting, I don't look at the sights anyway, I just kinda shoulder it and look at the target, 
and and everything just happens naturally i don't need to really see that front sight but if you're going to fire a slug with it or want to make a precise shot for some reason definitely going to have to have a higher front sight on it so there you have it the remington model 11 sportsman's model 12 gauge made in 1947 still got a lot of life le left and it still shoots really great mechanically excellent condition um, you know, a lot of times people just don't shoot these guns enough and they don't really get much use. They get carried a lot, but they don't get really f fired or shot a lot. But um, I'll find a use for it. Right now it's pretty much a slug gun or a close quarters uh, bird shot type thing. But maybe I'll find a new barrel for it or a different barrel for it sometime down the road and turn it into uh, basically uh, a conventional type, uh, you know, 28 inch modified barrel shotgun. So there it is, the Remington. Model 11, sportsman's model.